Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. It is a savage nation, trying to cheer up a defeated nation, a nation run by the worst administrator in American history. We'll call him an administrator. If this guy was running a college... He would have been thrown out by now for incompetence and for being anti-college. So this weekend was Fleet Week in San Francisco. The whole week is Fleet Week and Navy ships come in and I usually get invited aboard a warship. I went aboard the USS Somerset, which is an amphibious landing ship and trans it's an amphibious transport dock ship. Now, it's a new ship. It's only two years old. It had the new ship smell on it. it still had the new ship smell. And I love warships, and I love meeting the young people who make this ship run. They usually take Marines into harm's way. They are known as, in the parlance of the guys and the women who run them, as the taxi for the, for the Marines. You know, and despite what Obama has done to the military, despite his decapitation of the command structure in order to Rendered the military somewhat like uh, the uh, Soviet military, the Soviet Navy, before it lost its interchange with the Japanese Navy in the early 1900s. Yeah, oh, that's what happened. You know, the Soviets once had the most powerful navy in the world, so they thought. And these dreadnoughts went up against the young, aggressive Japanese Navy, and they were decimated. And Obama, of course, would like to see that happen to this Navy. We know that. But it's not going to happen. Because I met some of the most wonderful people in the world on that ship. The men and women who actually make the ship run. And they're, they're still there. These ships would not run if it wasn't for these... How shall I put it? They stand straight and tall. Their shoulders are back. They're made of iron. They're brave and they love America. There's no other way to put it. And I loved being aboard this ship because it's named for... Why, why do you think the ship is called the USS Somerset? And the food was great, by the way. i got to tell you, the food was great. Normally, you would think that the buffet aboard a Navy ship would be horrendous, you know, for guests. And especially during sequestration, where only the money goes to the grifters who support congresswomen uh, and senators. But no, the food was good. They catered the sushi. They had a slicing bar, or whatever you call it, a hot bar with the roast beef and the lamb chops. I'm normally on a low cholesterol diet, which is I'm still, why I'm still alive. Despite what idiots who are high school dropouts know nothing about science. I, I can't believe what I'm listening to on the radio now. You got morons who dropped out of high school giving you lectures on, on medicine. I can't believe it. Oh, the government told you the cholesterol's bad for you, but it's really good for you. No, moron. No, moron. That's not the way science works. It wasn't the government. It was the Framingham Heart Study. Go explain that to a high school dropout who smokes cigars, who's giving you health lectures now. But I uh, violated my anti-cholesterol reg regimen, and I had like maybe four lamb chops. I can't help it. It's the kid in me. I'll have another and another and the shrimp and the this and the crabs. But here's the surprising thing. The Somerset was named for, you know what, does anyone know what Somerset is referenced to? United Airlines Flight 93, when the vermin called Islamo-Fascists. Islamo, I-S-L-A-M-O hyphen fascists. The Muslim terrorist bastards flew those planes into the World Trade Center, then into Pennsylvania. This ship was created in namesake for the people who died aboard that flight. And there's a memorial wall to them, and it's pretty stirring to see the people have not forgotten who they are. Remember, the passengers and crew were able to make calls from the flight and then learn of the events that were unfolding at the World Trade Center of the Pentagon. And realizing then that their plane was under attack by the Islamo vermin, the passengers decided to take action. And their heroic stand lasted only a few minutes. But their actions reverberate loudly today, right now, on the Savage Nation. And at 10.03, the plane crashed into a reclaimed coal strip mine in Stony Creek Township in Somerset County, PA. You should know that had it not been for the brave actions of these people aboard that plane who knew they were going to die, 
but chose to try to kill the vermin, the filthy vermin who took over that plane. The Islamo-fascist vermin would have reached their intended target and countless more lives would have been lost. And so the ship is named in their memory. It should stand as a uh, reminder to all of us that all of us can play a role in fighting the fascists who are now trying to take over the world. Make no mistake about it. They're everywhere, and Obama's importing them as quickly as possible. Now, I didn't say he's seeking out ISIS members, but I also didn't say he's not seeking out ISIS members. If you flood America with Muslims from a war zone, can anyone listening to this show, no matter how brainwashed you are, can you honestly tell me that you know which one of them is a genuine refugee and which one of them may be an ISIS member hiding as a refugee? You know you can't. You say, well, what do I care? Well, if you don't care, then don't listen to the show. Go listen to NPR. Go waste your time listening to garbage. Because this country, this world that you live in, is under attack on a daily basis. If you think it's hyperbole, I can't help you. It means that your head is in the sand. We are fighting a world war. And guess who's winning? It's not us. And that's because we lack a commander-in-chief. We have a lying, thieving commander-in-chief who refuses to acknowledge the enemy itself. How do I know that's true? Why am I so alarmed about the fact that ISIS, Al-Qaeda, and the other Islamo-fascists around the world are not being decimated, not being degraded, not being defeated, but are in fact metastasizing into a cancer that could sweep over the entire world that you live in? Why do I say it? Even Cameron of England two weeks ago corrected Obama when they were on a panel at the U.N., and Obama dared say that all religions have terrorists in them, and Cameron had to literally catch him and say, now, Barack, we've both fought them together, and you know that it's particularly Islamic fascists that threaten the world. And Obama didn't change his tune. He didn't lose a beat. Because Obama's on a tear here. He is on a tear. And you have to ask yourself why he won't put Islamo next to it when even Muslims understand that it's connected to Islam. How can you call Islamic State not Islamic State? What are they? What are they? The Buddhist state? The Jewish state? The Christian state? The Hindu state? The Zoroastrian state? They want a fundamentalist 7th century world to emerge on the planet. And you won't survive in it. Your wife will be in a burqa. Your daughter will be sexually mutilated. You will live in, in, a, in a hell you could never imagine. But you wouldn't know that given the media that we have today. And so, as I say, we have the warships, we have the planes, we have the tanks, we have the missiles, we have weapons that we can't even imagine, but we don't have the leadership. The commander-in-chief has decapitated the leadership. The ships still sail, the planes still fly, but they don't hit the targets. Did you know what, what news story I broke for you last Friday? I'm the only one in the radio media who got it. Do you remember the story? It's an astonishing story. I put it up on michaelsavage.com. I'm shocked. I think I tweeted it out. I'm doing more tweeting now. I have three people tweeting. I decided to become a tweeter. Apparently, everyone likes to tweet, so I'm tweeting as often as possible. And I th here it is. It was from the Free Beacon, but I saw it from a source before that. U.S. pulls aircraft carrier from the Persian Gulf. Obama suddenly, in the middle of the night, 11 o'clock our time, last Thursday or Friday night, abruptly pulled the USS Theodore Roosevelt out of the Persian Gulf. This is the first time since 2007 that the United States has no aircraft carrier in the sea. He took it out late Thursday night under the lying guise that it was taken out for maintenance. Can you believe that he gets away with a thing like this? The ship has 5,000 troops and 65 combat planes. And Obama abruptly removed this ship from the Persian Gulf. Why did he do it? He didn't do it for maintenance. I told you why I think he did it. He did it because he was afraid the Russians would sink it. That's how sad this country has become under this man in the White House. I, oh, look, I've heard it before, Mike. Get off the Obama bashing. I can't get off it. There's no way to stop it. The man is a disaster. He's going to destroy all of us unless somebody steps in and says it. I'm saying it. A few others are saying it. There's not a, few, there's not a lot of us left who are willing to even say it. Steve Croft on CBS News tried to take the charlatan on. We have that sound. 
We have one person in the electronic media, other than the few people in radio, who dare take on the charlatan, the conniver in the White House. Steve Croft challenged him on every level. And the snake thought that he charmed everybody with his lies because he's gotten away with it all his life. Ever since he's been a little child, this kid has gotten away with anything he wanted because he's a silk smooth, pathological liar, possibly mentally ill. Now, all of that wouldn't matter to me if he wasn't the commander in chief. We are losing the war against the most dangerous terrorists the world has ever seen. We're losing it. I can prove it to you. You know, the news is so bad that I, bear, I dare not give it to you. I started by talking about the positive of the ship, but I realize I'm getting agitated and it's only Monday. And by the way, I think I've canceled my vacation. That's right. Remember I told you I was going to go away Wednesday for a week? No, I'm not going. I can't. There's too much work. I have the book coming out, Government Zero. <clears throat> I can't go away. I can't turn my back from what this charlatan is doing on, uh, for a second. There's too much at stake. This is a uh, touch-and-go situation whether we're going to survive another year and some months from him. I don't know if we can survive it. I honestly don't know. I don't know how much more harm he can do that we can still function as a functional nation. Wait until you hear the sound that I play of some of the radicals in the black movement, what they've been screaming at events. Wait till you hear what Reverend Wright, remember him, said at a rally amongst black radicals over the weekend. And when you hear Reverend Wright, you'll know that this is Obama. This is Obama's id speaking nakedly and loudly. And then you'll understand some of the reasons that we're having this trouble. Jeremiah Wright says Jesus was a Palestinian. Now, of course, there were no Palestinians at the time of Jesus. Everyone knows Jesus was Jewish. Everyone on earth knows Jesus was Jewish. And yet to this psychopath, Obama's preacher, he said Jesus was a Palestinian. And the black people in America, he said, are like Palestinians. You have any idea how psychotic this is? Do you have any idea to speak like this at a Million Man March in the National Mall on Saturday? Do you, know how, do you know how incendiary this is? Do you have any idea that Obama is, Jeremiah Wright, exposed? Play that soundbite before I take my break. And while people are listening to this, I invite them to go to my website, michaelsavage.com, for one reason. I'm trying to get pictures up of me on the Navy ship, and you'll see some of the young men and women who fly those helicopters, etc., and, and steer the ship. It's amazing to see these guys. They're still there. And I talked to these kids, and now they got into it. But I put something new up under Government Zero, my new book. I put up all the chapters of the book, because most people write books that are fluff. They put their name on them, they write a few words, and they sell another book. I want you to see that I am still the scholar I always have been, you wait till you see the chapters and what's in them, and then you'll find out you cannot, you cannot resist it. There it is. There's, I'm sorry, it's up there. There's Mike with the helicopter next to the young men in the flying machines. And there's the Let's Roll picture. It's up. Fleet Week, Savage next to the tent where there was good roast beef and good shrimp on Let's Roll. Savage next to the Huey helicopter. Savage next to the Black Hawk. And I talked to these young men who fly these things. I asked them how they got into the Navy and how they do it. You know what? You need to be around really good Americans, not around the garbage that the media selects. You got to stop listening to the garbage in the streets that they go and look for in Ferguson and the gutters of Oakland. And go look at the black men on the ship and you'll see the real black community. And you'll see patriotic black men, not haters of America. Go aboard a ship and you'll see young people and old people of all races who love this country. Not the garbage that the media focuses on. That's all I can say. That's my opening. I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. We must not continue to let a minority of Europeans rule over the majority of the black inhabitants of the planet Earth. The whole Earth belongs to our people, not just Puerto Rico, not just the Dominican Republic, not just Guatemala. The whole Earth belongs to our people. Those are the sage words of one of the attendees of the so-called